Hi guys, Ronnie here. Today I want to talk about bikes and different bike categories. So a couple of days ago I had a discussion with one of my friends that now with the ever-growing uh, niche markets and segments in the cycling industry, is this really the best time uh, to have N plus one bikes or is N plus one the number of bikes you actually need? And I had a really good thought about it a couple of days ago and I have to say, in my opinion and in my situation, it actually isn't the case. So let me just start with my road bike here. Well, it's a quite modern air road bike and since I'm racing, I think this is the best choice. Uh, I mean, the category of road bike that I'm going to use since uh, most of the the terrain that the races are held on is flat or with just small hills and in this particular model the weight penalty is not really that much of an issue so the aero bike I think is the obvious choice when you're racing if you're not then I think you'll be better off with uh, something more comfortable but uh, if you take road bikes as such uh, I have a friend that has four high-end road bikes, two of them are aero bikes, one of them is uh, a comfort-oriented bike and one of them is a climbing bike, but uh, he doesn't really uh, ride all that much, so all those expensive bikes are just sitting in the garage and I think it's, it's quite a waste and it doesn't really make sense to have uh, more bikes of the same category unless you are a professional rider and or racers should I say and you are paid to win races because then of course if I were paid to win races I'd have uh, two of these exact same bikes to have a spare one in case one, one of them fails when I'm racing and I think same goes for the cyclocross bike uh, now cyclocross I think is a growing discipline uh, nowadays and when you want to do it really seriously then of course you, need, you are going to need to do a bike swap in some races when it's really muddy so you're going to need two bikes and a couple of sets of wheels and the same goes for a road bike but if you are not racing cyclocross then really a cyclocross bike uh, is essentially a quiver killer so you can do anything on it you can do gravel riding you can do road riding anything you want so again that's another case uh, against the and plus one uh, scheme. Now I also have a time trial bike which is currently set up uh, on my turbo trainer upstairs and I use that uh, for winter training in order to keep adapted to my position and that's uh, unless you're a triathlete that's an extremely niche uh, product because you only really need it when you're racing time trials because otherwise it's uh, it's fun to ride a couple of times let's say twice per week but I definitely wouldn't want to ride it every day because it's not that comfortable it's harder to maintain it's more fragile it's less uh, less comfortable but I think I always said that the handling is not as good and you can't really go on the group rides with it so yeah in my case these three bikes are really all all that I need uh, and even if you're racing as a professional, I think you don't really need a spare time trial bikes, time trial bike because, well, uh, if your bike cooks in a time trial, then you're pretty much done. You're not going to be in the top spots anyway. So then it's it's perfectly good uh, enough to finish on the road bike. Now one uh, other bike category that I would consider is perhaps uh, something of a commuter but as it stands uh, right now uh, I live where I work so I don't really do that much commuting and when I have to do some shopping or some other errands then it usually involves carrying some bigger loads so that unfortunately means getting in a car which I don't really like but unfortunately that's how it is with business sometimes uh, now if you go to the mountain bike side of things, then perhaps there could be some other category that uh, you could find useful depending on where you live. Unfortunately, and I really uh, don't like this fact 
about where I live, but there are no real mountains or mountain bike trails to speak of. So uh, I really liked riding mountain bikes, uh, which I have done in the previous years. But uh, besides racing and preparing for road races and cyclocross races nowadays also, there's not really uh, too much time left to um, spend visiting bike parks, which are quite far away from where I live. Even though it's it's a hell of a lot of fun, I think it's the most fun thing I have ever done. But yeah, I can't do it locally, so it just doesn't make sense to me. Even the humble cross-country bike, I was thinking about that a lot this summer. But in the end, I decided to go with the cross bike because well, uh, cross-country marathons collide with my road season, so that's another thing. And then the second one, as I previously mentioned, it's uh, it's not an ideal place to ride mountain bikes where I live. Then I have also uh, have been thinking about the fat bike or some of these more uh, niche items, but again, it just doesn't really snow too much here. So all I really need is to stay on the road uh, with some cross diversions. So yeah, this is basically my experience uh, I have with the M plus one scheme. I don't really f find it uh, too useful. Even if I had an unlimited budget, I don't think I would go into having more bikes because then uh, it's more bikes to maintain, less time to ride. And yeah, this way, I know that all my bikes are at the highest possible level. You may already know that if you watched my previous videos. And yeah, I prefer having three uh, top of the line bikes than let's say 10 mid middle of the range bikes. And this way I can keep track uh, on what's going on with them in terms of maintenance. Okay, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little thought process of mine. And if you have some ideas or suggestions, then don't forget to leave them uh, in the comment section down below. And if you'd like to know more about my three bikes, then don't forget to tune into my channel and subscribe. It's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.